We are back with another interview. It's your boy Duno. We are here on No Jumper. And we got the legend, the myth, the one and only, the one that makes the Thea screams, the grandmas, <laughs> the girls, the young girls, the older girls. We got MC Magic in the building. How you doing, man? Duno, gracias for having me, brother. I'm blessed. Man, I just want to start off. Thank you for what you did for our people, man. You, you've been holding it down, making love music for... For I guess you could say like the the Latinos that were raised in in in, in the states and stuff like that. You mixing up English and Spanish, and just thank you for making so many songs that I dedicated, dedicated to so many girls. Even though I didn't know half of them until I got older, <laughs> I appreciate you for that, man. You're welcome, my brother. You know, making love songs has just been something that uh that was just born in my heart. It was born out of being Latino, really. You know. Yes. You know, my mom and my mom playing Los Terricolas in the background, Jose Jose, Vicente Fernandez. Okay. You know, all that good stuff. It just it gets it gets in, in your DNA is what it is. Most definitely. Um I was raised um with with fucking immigrant parents, so I I grew up a lot on like well my parents didn't really grow up too much, but for sure listen to some Jose Jose every once in a while. Yeah. Some Hong Gabriel in the in the Saturday morning, Sunday morning while we're cleaning, but definitely grew up on more like Love um fucking rock and espanol songs. That's yeah. fire. Fire, dope. fire. Yeah, exactly. All that good stuff. And I actually uh, grew up in the projects in Arizona. In Arizona. And so in the projects, you know, we're blended. We're Chicanos and, and blacks. And yeah, so yeah. the R and B became a real big part Ooh, of my okay. of my influence as well. You know, listening to some to some Key Sweat uh, way back in the day, like uh, Morris Day in the Time, Ooh. everything that Babyface produced, all that kind of stuff. And, and so all that music also became part of my influence and that's why my music has that that mixed up sound and then of course zap and roger we you know, with computer love yeah. and more bounce and, and always love the talk box so the fact that i was able to bring talk box in and make it part of my staple it just it just came amazing that's crazy can you um one i want to let you know that i was heartbroken when i when i found out that you weren't from la <laughs> I was heartbroken, bro. I was a kid, and I was like, "He's from Arizona," and they were like, "Yes," <laughs> and I was like, "You're lying." That's dope, man. That's actually a compliment. That's that, actually yes. a compliment because L.A. and Chicanoism is like the pinnacle. Yeah, you most know what I'm saying. Yeah. And to me, that's a compliment for people to say, "I always thought you were from L.A." But I get that a lot. I'll you be, do, you. So I'll you do in, get it a lot. Yeah, I'll be in Texas and Chicago. In, in Florida, and they'll be like, man, I miss L.A., bro. Right there on Normandy, bro. That's why I used to kick it. <laughs> You'd be like, where's Normandy? <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, and I know now because I'm yeah, always yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, I'm always over here. Um, how was your upbringing um, in Arizona and in those projects and and just being Latino and, and for AZ? You know, it, it was it was dope. I, I was the kind of person that, that, that actually listened to my mom. Okay, I said, actually listen. listened to my mom. You were scared of the whoopings. I was scared of the ass whoopings. And not only that, I saw my mom and my dad break up and, and the toughness that she went through. I'm like, man, I don't want to make her life worse. Okay. Uh, because my mom, seven kids, right? Ooh. And then my dad left when I was 10. So she said, mira, mijo, if you do this and this and this, y si haces esto, te van a meter a la cárcel. You were like, I don't want to go to jail. I definitely <laughs> don't, don't want to go to jail. So, so I tried to listen to what mom said and I stayed away from the craziness. But I think God gave me music. To kind of be my dad, because my dad wasn't around, but music kind of guided me through like all kind of good stuff. Are you the middle child, the youngest, the oldest? You know? I'm exactly the middle child. Yeah, yeah. I have three little sisters and three big sisters. Oh, so you're literally the middle. Oh, you're the only guy. I'm the only boy. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> you know what's crazy? Because I'm the only boy too, but I, I mean, was, was it, I don't have six sisters, but I have three of them, including my mom, because I don't have a dad. So it's literally four women and just me. That was crazy, right? Yeah, it is crazy. And, and, and you know, the older sisters, what I, what, I watched, uh, what I watched my older sisters do was as soon as my dad left, they're like, forget listening to mom. I'm running away with my boyfriend. All of them. All of them. All of them. And I'm like, damn, is this what happens? <laughs> but I guess that's what happens. Yeah. You know? um, most definitely. I think shit, my older sister definitely ran away with her boyfriend at, 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 like, at a pretty young age. My other, but both my older sisters, the two oldest ones, they, the minute they hit 18, well, I think when you're already a product of the environment and you're like, like my older sister went through a lot. So the minute she, she was already an adult at the age of 15, 16, in reality, she was already an yeah, adult. Yeah, yeah. But the minute she hit 18, she was definitely like moved out. My other sister yeah. too, the minute they hit 18 and my mom was like, you provide me the GED or the high school diploma, you could move on with your life. Do what you do. And that's yeah, exactly, exactly what they did. But your sister's leaving or in, and doing their thing, did that affect you because it affected your mom? You know, I, I, I kind of I was in my own world. I was, I've always been a loner. 
And, okay. and because my best friend was the stereo, you know, yeah. I was listening to and I was listening to all type of music uh, as a kid. I remember that, that, that we had a, a boom box in the house. I don't even know who it belonged to, but we had a boom box and I would take that boom box and I'd listen to like the AM station back in Phoenix when I was a kid. Yeah. No R&B music or black music was on FM. It was all like puro, like uh, 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 um, classic rock, the Eagles pop like uh okay. you know whatever was popping back then yeah and and only am station had like black and r&b music it was 1060 kq am so i would record 1060 kq i would record copa copa was the pop station that had uh american top 40 can you remember the artists that were playing at the moment oh man lots of artists it's funny that you say that because uh like like i'll, I'll just uh, I'll, I'll listen to random radio stations and I'll know songs that I damn I haven't heard this since I was 10 but I know the song by memory yeah. because as a kid music just gets into you bro yeah you were just so invested in it yeah 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 and I was listening to everything like Tears for Fears like the early George Michael uh, that song I have no clue who you're talking about Magic but yeah. I definitely know it. they did a great inspiration <laughs> on you <laughs> George Michael is, is Careless Whispers bro I'm still confused. <laughs> I was born in 2000. Yeah, in, two, in 2000, I was already dropping music, bro. My first album came out in 95, man. Okay, so so let's get into the music. Um, Can you remember the first song you ever wrote? Whether it was good or bad or whether it was just something you knew you wanted to do. Can you remember? I do, I do. Yeah. Me, and my, me and my homie Marcos, uh, we were living temporarily in Tucson at the time in some little, some little apartments. And me and my homie Marcos would bang on like the the white the white drums, the, okay, pool, okay, okay, yeah, the five yeah. gallon drums. Yeah, yeah. And, and I wrote a song called "We Fell in Love," <laughs> <laughs> and I still remember the melody. It used to go, "We fell in love." That's crazy. Yeah. When we made a mistake, something like that. I think I was probably ten. You were ten. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then. Through all high school, were you invested in music the way, obviously, you're a yeah. fucking legend now, yeah. but were you invested in, like, were you doing, like, was there, like, programs at your high school or middle school or was stuff like I that? I did. I joined, the, I, joined the, I joined the high school band when I was, like, a sophomore, and I figured, you know, if, uh, if I can learn to play an instrument, then maybe I can make music down the road. Because when you're a kid, you have dreams, but you really don't believe they can come true, you know? Yeah, most definitely. I thought I was going to be an NFL player, but little did I forget <laughs> that I'm 5'9", and, like, can't run that fast and i ain't like tall as fuck but uh yeah so when i joined the band uh they because it was it, it, i was a uh, um i lived in a little suburb called avondale and in the band first of all uh there's very little mexicans in the school that i used to go to agua fria mm -hmm. and then and then the the and even less mexicans in the band you know there were mostly the gringuitos that were they were in the uh you know in the yeah, band in the band and so the, the white teacher would give favor to the gringuito boys. That was a thing. Yeah, it's always, it always, always was, was that way. And so I was on snare, snare, and I was just trying to get my snare. And there was a kid named Scott Leach. He's like, you know, you don't do it very well. Let me show you. And so <laughs> Scott Leach would always take over and wouldn't let me even, like, learn. Uh, and he was kind of a bully. So when I pushed him once, he fell all the way down the, the, the thing. Down the bleachers. It, it was not the bleachers. I was about to say, you committed an assault, Magic. No. In, in, ba in band <laughs> class, they have levels. It like stairs, but you have like the flutes, the clarinets, the trombone, and then the drums are at the top. At what age was this? Uh, man, I was probably 14, 15. Okay, so he was like, man, fuck you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> he went down. He went down. And then after that, he just let you do your thing? No, I got kicked out of band. Oh, you got kicked out of band. <laughs> so, so... After you got kicked out of band, where you kind of like, man, I don't want, I don't, music maybe isn't for me. No, I never gave up on music because music never gave up on me. And so I said, I got to do music one way or another. And then back in that, in that time, uh, like Grandmaster Flash, UTFO, uh, Rapper's Delight, all that stuff was coming out. And I'm like, I got to be a DJ. So and I, uh, I couldn't afford to buy turntables. So in, in wood shop, I made these square boxes and I took the, the turntable from the living room. I put it in there, screwed it in, figured out how to wire it. And I made my own turntables. That is fucking crazy. The fact that you made your own. And at what age was this? I, like I said, 15, 15 16, 16, around there. Yeah. And then, and can you remember your first DJ gig before your any music, any like music making? I, gig? I actually do because I lied to, to get the gig. Um, I had just moved to that new projects in Avondale. Uh, yeah. And this girl, our neighbor Shirley, she said, "Magic." Uh, she didn't even say magic because I haven't even magic yet. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so she said, "I'm having a birthday party. Do you know any good DJs?" And you were like, "I did." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a DJ. I'm a DJ." She said, for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes, because I have a birthday coming up on Saturday, and I need a DJ. And I'm like, I got you, but 
I just need to borrow your mom's stereo system. You know what I'm saying? Because my equipment is way back where I used to live. Yeah. That's a lie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, and so I said, and if your mom gives me like 20 bucks, I'll go buy some records. Because back then it was seven inch records. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I went and bought like Cutie Pie and Zap. Cutie think, Pie. Y'all got the reason Ooh, why. That party was going up. Where, where the <laughs> fuck you was at? It was that one. And let me see you groove it on the dance floor, Damn. baby. For, for, did you get any hip hop ones? Don't, that was hip hop. That was hip hop at the that moment. That was hip hop. Wow, one. that's crazy. So at the moment, there was no Snoop and all that. No, Snoop didn't even come out until way uh, That's many years crazy. Later. Yeah. Imagine going to a party like, hey man, we're going to a hip hop party, and then you just walk in and it's like, cutie pie. That's crazy. See, but back then, hip hop was just starting out. Like when Rapper's Delight came out, to me, that was like the beginning of hip hop on, on a rap. commercial level. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that was probably, I want to say, uh, 80. 86, 87, around there. That's crazy. Can you remember how the party went and how good you did? It was dope, man. Was dope. I was addicted. As soon as I, I, I started DJing Shirley's party, I was like, this is it right here. This is this is what I need to do. Yeah, yeah. And then after high school, you just continued the little gigs like at clubs and private parties? Or was it like a, you were already kind of stable in the city and you got the, the radio gig? Because I know you did radio too. Yeah, the same people that kicked me out of band hired me to DJ the school dances. And so it was weird that like, they kicked me out of band, but then like, well, this is a, here's a free DJ that goes to school here. And so when I started DJing dances, I figured it out. But then I, but then I was doing them for free just to get my name known. And yeah. we and I would also f DJ for free at the park on Thursday nights, and we would get a crowd. And I started handing out my little business cards, and so that's how my wow, business started. Wow, you would DJ at the park on a? You said Friday night. I, well, the way I figured it out was if I DJ Thursday night, I got Friday and Saturday open to make money. Oh, so it was a Thursday night. It was Thursday nights. Um, can you remember like how did that come about? Like, hey, I'm just be at this park and let me connect my shit here. Yeah, there was a there was a lady that worked at City Hall in the city of Avondale. Her name is Linda Tyler. If you're still alive, Linda, thank you for giving me a shot. Shout out Linda, man, for I, being a great woman. Yeah, I went to Linda and I said, Linda, I'm trying to keep the kids off the streets. I want to put music over there and just play so people can have a good time. I'm like, you work at City Hall. Tell the police to go guard over there. That way there's no problems. And she laughed at me. She goes, who are you trying to keep off the streets? I'm like, you know, like the young kids. She goes, how old are you? I'm like, I think I was 14. And she laughed at me. She said, well, we're going to give you a shot. And Thursday nights, the first night, the night we did, it was just me and my friends. It probably, we had 18, 20 people. 19, 20 but people. it got so big that the police said, there's too many people coming out. We got to stop Thursday nights. But by that time, I was already popular in Avondale. You were already popping. The, and then, um, can you remember the first club you did? Yeah, yeah. I used to DJ this, this, this club called Studio West in Phoenix. It's crazy how... how I remember uh, we used to try to beat our record because I had Sunday night uh, teen, teen nights. Yeah, teen nights. I did Sunday night teen nights at the club and, and Studio West. We used to get up to 2,000 kids every Sunday night. It was, God damn. It was cracking, bro. Cracking. Can you remember what songs he was bumping? It was the same like agenda, like the Cutie Pie. Like Bust a Move by Young MC. Wow. Yeah, okay. Bust a Move by Young MC. Uh, what other songs were, were Tone Low? Uh, let's, let's do it. Oh wow, this shit is crazy, yeah, Magic. Yeah. You really like. That's what I'm saying. You really went through every step of the shit. Yeah, that's that man. That music was good, and I mean, I was there when JJ Fad came out. You know, Supersonic. That was hard. That's you know? that is oh, because I'm literally born in 2000. So <laughs> some, some of the shit I I know like maybe one or two names. Where does the name Magic come from? Um, oh, but was your name already Magic while you were DJing? I started as a as a DJ. I named myself the Magic Mixer because yeah. I figured I was, it was magically mixing music together. Okay, uh -huh. And then when I decided to start writing songs, when when actually when I wrote Lost in Love, I said I need a I need an MC name, and my initials were already MC Marco Cardenas. Yeah. So I said MC Magic. Wow. Okay. Wow. Lost in Love is crazy. When was Lost in Love written? It was probably like, uh, it was written in my mind on a New Year's Eve. I remember it was New Year's Eve that I wrote it in my mind, but I couldn't make it music until later when I learned how to make music. Mm -hmm. But when I first wrote it, it was like a New Year's Eve. I was sitting there and, and just, you know, imagining the perfect girl, and I wrote the chorus only. I want to get lost, lost in love with you. <laughs> yeah, and I wrote that, and, and it stayed in my mind. I didn't write it on paper because it stayed in my mind. Oh. And, and so finally, maybe two years later, back in, in like in 1990 or 89, I met this girl Tracy and Tracy had a pretty voice and I'm like Tracy uh, can you sing this little hook for me and and I made just some BS music uh, real quick on my keyboard and Tracy sang it and it's still the song that you hear today that very one first one 1990 dog that's and 
It's 10 just, years before you were born, bro. Food. That is, it's, it's crazy to know that. And, 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 and this is me giving your flowers that you could still, you still are touring off these songs that were made so long ago. Yeah, it's and amazing. Such, and such legendary things. When Lost, was Lost in Love the first song that you, the first time you knew it, music was like forever going to be you? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it definitely was the first one that I saw, that I saw the crowd react and I was like, oh, damn, they're singing my lyrics. And, and the rush that you get through your body is like a calor frio, you know what I'm saying? Can you remember the first time you performed it? Nah, I, I, I don't. It, it had to be at a lowrider show. Though. It had to be at a lowrider <laughs> yeah. show. That is crazy. Lost in Love is, is a trip. And you wrote that as MC Magic. As MC Magic, uh-huh. MB, Raider, um, MB Riders came down the line? Yeah. What happened was I, I came out in 95 as MC Magic. MC Magic. In 95, when I dropped my first album, Lost in Love was on it. Lost in Love it was, was on it. It was like one of the first songs that I wrote a few years before that. Okay. So in 95, that came out. And then I started to work on my sophomore album, which is my second album. Yeah, your sophomore is it. And when I did that, I, I, I met some other dudes from the neighborhood and from Glendale. And, and, when, and back then, features wasn't a big thing, you know? It was just it was just you do your own thing, everybody does yeah. their own thing. And so because I had so many features, I thought, man, I can't call this an MC Magic album. So I just named it after my record company, Nasty Boy Records. I named it Nasty Boy Click. It was supposed to be a compilation, and people thought Nasty Boy Click is a group. Yes. You see what I'm saying? And so then Nasty Boy Click came out, and I and I made a contract with this one record company out of San Jose, and I just wasn't happy with with uh, how things were going with them. And so in 98, after our second album, I told the owner, John, I'm like, I want to leave. I, I don't want to be here no more. Yeah. I'm not happy with you make all the money. I don't make nothing. Yeah. And so he's like, yeah, you can leave. But under the contract, I own the name. And Na and Nasty Boy, Boy Click. Oh, no, for Nasty Boy Click. Nasty Boy Click. And I'm like, keep the name. I'll, I'll make another one. And that's when I changed it to MB Riders. Wow. People, stand up for yourself against these labels. <laughs> Look what happens. The legends, legends are made. And, and then... And this was 98. 98 is when I left. Uh, and, and then uh, MB Riders popped label. off 99. And then, and then the first single of MB Riders was Runaway. Okay. We could run away and we, spend some time. Down. Yeah, okay. And so because now I knew people at radio stations, I could send them my, my record directly. And so when I started sending it to him, John up in San Jose, he's like, Magic. He goes, what's this song that you got? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, yeah, we're called MB Riders now, bro. And he's like, I need you to come back. Come back to the label. I'll give you some money. I'll take care of you. Whatever. And so we made a deal, and he gave me a, a good little uh, amount of money, and I brought the whole group back, and I said, but this time, whenever we break up again or we have a fallout, you don't own the name anymore. He's yeah. like, see, more magic, whatever you want. And then, and then contracts are written. And where, we, yeah, exactly. Where, okay, you yeah. Know? And actually, that was a handshake deal that I made with John. That was yeah. a handshake. It was all yeah. word. And he, and he kept his word. He never tried to take the name MB Riders. Oh, wow. He kept his word, uh, John Lopez's name, because uh, he came to Phoenix, actually, to meet with me. We went to a little burger joint called Lenny's Burger and that's where we made the deal that is fucking a trip that like your life moves so quick and the love of music is just so fucking like can you remember when you guys wrote Pretty Girl I do remember when I wrote Pretty Girl uh, when, I, when, I, when I was doing the hook to Pretty Girl there's a rapper named Diablo uh, from San Diego he sent me some beats He's like, Magic, I want to work with you, bro. Let's let's do a collab. You know, he's got kind of like the Chicano yeah, yeah, accent because exactly. he speaks more Spanish than English. Yeah, yeah. And so Diablo sent me a, a few beats. And when I, I was listening to that beat, the Pretty Girl beat, and, and I just jumped in the box and I started freestyling a whole bunch of stuff on my talk box. And then I came out of the studio and I listened to everything and I'm like, that's the hook right there. Something about you, baby. Yeah, yeah. I cut everything else out and that became the hook to the song. I think I think that intro is just so fucking legendary. Ooh, can you know, I run away? That that part is crazy. Okay, so let me give you this rundown about my life now about this this song pretty good, right? I remember the first time I heard it. Um, the Humgirls were playing. Obviously, we're growing up, so it's like kind of like we're listening to we're listening to some. My era is very big on like the YGs and like the Schoolboy Q and like. Casey Vest. So we're like very entitled to hip hop, you know what I no mean? No doubt, yeah. But as, as also being Latinos, all of our older like sisters or tias or moms are fans of you guys, you know what I mean? But I remember like there was a point in time where like a lot of Latinos probably wouldn't listen to Latino music, maybe because it was like not looked down upon, but it was just like that's not really what we grew up to, you know what I mean? Because and then, but I think and I think you guys and like Obviously, Little Rob is, is a big... Summer Nights is a classic. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But I think Pretty Girl is just one of those things where, like, 
if you dedicate it to a girl, it's something that hasn't been dedicated to a yeah. girl at your at least yeah. in my yeah. So you know how many times I dedicated this song, bro? <laughs> you magic, you don't understand. I just want to put that out there. I've gotten so much pussy Woo! because I know word by word, and I don't only know the hook. Magic, <laughs> I know the I'm, fuck, I know the verses. Si tu supieras lo que siento. Yeah, I know all this shit. <laughs> I know the verses. So that song is just a fucking that's love, bro. You, you know, I think the reason music becomes part of your life is because it reminds you of a special time in your life. Most definitely. I definitely had a good time. And, 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 and I want to let you know, obviously, we're going to have more. Um, we're going to get into more of this conversation. But every time I, like, host a club and it's like a Latino club, I always make sure before I leave, y- your song is always the Thank last you, one brother. to come on. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And then I'll show that. you. I have a mix that I did for a whole reggaeton thing. And your song is the last one before before I yeah before I'm done seeing. I appreciate the fact that 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 you were able to to be a part of my music when it was coming out. Yes. But here's here's someone that I hardly ever give credit to, and I, and I want to give credit to because if it wasn't for her, our songs would not be as big as they were. Uh-huh. Um, like like Pretty Girl was a B record. It wasn't the the main single. The main single was So Fly, fly so, so Cool, cool. Baby Girl. Can I talk? That was crazy. I'm only in town for one night. These songs are so fucking crazy. But I'll continue. So So Fly was the single. That was the first single from the the MB Riders last album. Last that I, album that, that yeah. I produced. Yes. And every hit every hit was recorded in my house, bro. In wow. my little home studio. All of them. And it's so it's crazy, you know. And was there a reason why you guys just you, okay? Obviously, you guys put the tape together, right? You and the nasty boy, um, you, you what, what, what was it called? You and MB Riders, you guys put the tape together, and obviously, you guys go like, we want this to be track one, track yeah. two, track three. This isn't what 2000? No, no, I did everything. You I did, it. I, I, I was the executive producer, the director. The so you're manager. killing it, right? So you're sitting there at your house in your little studio, and you're like, yeah, okay, this song, this song, boom, boom, let me put this here. This is what, 1999 or 2000? 2003, because the album came out in, yeah, it came out in 04. Okay, 04, right? So you're sitting, boom, 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 boom. And you're like, so flies the one. I promise you, and and correct me if I'm wrong, you did not think Pretty Girl was going to be Pretty Girl. I didn't think Pretty Girl was going to be such a huge record. Wow. Yeah, and and even Lost in Love, every time we released it, it was on the back of something else. It wasn't the main single. Yeah, even yeah. Lost in Love, like, and the first time, well, first we released it, it was on the back of a song called Summertime, and then on the back of a vinyl called Just a Groove, and then on the B side of Down for Yours, and so it, it, Lost in Love just went by itself. And so, yeah. Same to Pretty Girl. That's that's. I always thought because obviously I was fucking four when it came out. So my sister was in her in her teenage. So she was going wow. Like she was like, bro, when they she like when MB Riders came out, she's like, you don't even understand. Like, like if you knew Soulfly word by word, you know how much pussy you were getting. You know how much <laughs> shit was going on. My, like the hardest motherfuckers ever was listening and singing this shit word for word. That's amazing to me. That's amazing to me because you know we wrote them with sincerity. I wasn't trying you know, to make it hit, and, and I believe you because. Yeah. There's a reason. That's what I'm trying to say, right? I think um, music in nowadays, everybody just trying to go for was 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 popping. 2004, hip hop was probably at its fucking highest. Doctor Dre, Snoop. Come on, when the Chronic came when out, the, yeah, pff, that whole era. When Doggy Style came out, because you could <laughs> listen when N.W.A. came out. Ooh. Oh my, I was there, bro. Yeah, I was I, there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Anybody could have been like. You know what? Let's rap. You could have easily been like, "Fuck this love shit." Let me let 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 me follow the trend, but you continue to do what you did and what you love and what you knew and what you you knew you you had a passion for, and you fucking released and made shit like Lost in Love. Yes. Even though even though Lost in Love, you made a little back back then. You brought it a little more back to life. Yeah. What happened was we re, the, the upstairs re released it in ninety eight. Yeah, re released, and that's it. when they called it Nasty Boy Click. Nasty Boy Click. Yeah, because they asked me, "Do you have any other hot love songs?" And I go, "I got this old one called Lost in Love." And they're like, "Let's release it as Nasty Boy Click." And so that's actually how we got signed again, because our first time we got signed, we was Mercury Records, and then we signed the deal with Upstairs Records. Okay. Yeah. And then you guys. That is a trip, bro. That is that is crazy. And then, can you remember? Obviously, your life had changed already yeah. with Lost in Love. But, but I, I want to back up a little bit. Yeah. You said even though all this rap and hip hop was going on, you know, uh, I had to be real to who I am. Exactly. You know, I never never been a gang member. Never, never. been violent. I mean, I had to whoop somebody's ass once. 
<laughs> but you, you gotta know, tell me that story about you would be somebody that it was just in high school i had a bully yeah, yeah. i had a bully named <laughs> alberto he used to mess mess with me in, in welding class fuck alberto and i was welding one time and he hit me in the casco and it messed up my welding and i was like man i'm tired of this shit so i, I got some i got some welding rods and i just beat the crap out of him fucking man. alberto got your ass whooped for yeah. being the wrong person yeah but god bless you alberto yeah. it's all love Hell yeah. That's crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like, staying true to yourself and all the love, great music you make. And not just love. I'm talking about, like, because music is done. It's not about making the music. It's about having the passion, you know, putting shit together, like 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 tapes and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think, I think uh, I, me, my opinion, that music tape has gotten away from being original and more like let's sound alike. Exactly. Let's, let's sound like Drake. Let's sound like, you know, uh, whoever whoever it is yeah. that's hot. And so, but back then, like like Snoop said, everybody sounded different. I didn't sound like Nas. Nas didn't sound like Jay. Jay didn't sound, you know, like like uh, N.W.A. Everybody was one of a kind. Like, like think about Outkast. Nobody sounds like Outkast. Nobody. To this day, nobody sounds like Outkast. Right. And, I, and that's what I be trying to explain to people. When I explain to people about you, I'm like, bro. He, nobody sounds like magic I mean Yeah it's just like a, a lot of love music And shit like that But I think the way you The talk box shit I know other people did it But the way you did it was At a whole other level Yeah and I was inspired By, by Roger Troutman Cause you know You know who Roger Troutman is? Cause you're young Let me educate okay, you Okay go ahead Put me on Put Roger, me on magic Roger Troutman is the creator Of Zap The band and he's the producer of songs like Computer Love. I okay, okay, want to okay. be your man. I don't know him, but I know the song. Yeah, so Roger is the, the dude behind everything. Okay. You know, he's like, like I'm the magic of MB Riders. Yeah, yeah. He's the magic of Zap. You okay. know what I'm saying? And so Roger, I got to work with him. I made a song called Down for Yours, and I knew it was a great song, but I wanted to feature Roger. And this is around the time when he had already done California Love for Tupac and Dre. Wow. Like Roger, that's him. Him. That's who does California love. That's Roger. That's Roger. Okay. That's him. He died already. Uh, R.I.P. Roger. Rest in peace, Roger Troutman. Yeah. Roger inspired me so much just working with him. Like I heard somebody say the other day, to be great, you got to rub off of somebody great. Mm. And I think being in the studio with Roger Troutman, it just put something in me that made me say, I got to keep doing this and I got to be great like him. Yeah, He's so amazing. And watching Roger perform was just amazing. Zapping Roger is what they used to call it back in the day. Yeah, yeah. And more bounce to the ounce, uh, dance floor, heard it through the grapevine. You probably don't remember none yeah. of these records. When, can you, when you and Zap Roger linked up, how, how the... Can you remember when he first co-signed you and you were like, fuck this. He, he, uh, uh, unfortunately, he didn't co-sign me. He, he charged did. me. He charged me. Yeah, he said, he said, Magic, listen, Dr. Dre paid me 18 racks to do California Love. Now, this is 96, bro. And I'm like, damn, Roger, I, don't, I, I can't afford it. He goes, let's do 10. And I had like 800, 900, $1,000 in my bank account. And he wanted 10 racks. And I'm like, fuck it, let's do it. I didn't have the money, but I knew I had to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got it. I got it. It took me a few days. I put my resources together. I sold a car. I went and applied for loans. I borrowed from my mom, from the homies, and we pulled t we pulled ten grand together so Roger could be on down for yours if you down for mine. Ooh, that nasty boy, click. That's Roger right there. That is fucking crazy. Yeah. It shot up you for supporting the business because you easily, you easily could have been like, I'm okay. I don't want to. Do I this. needed it though. It was real. Yes. I had to have it. Yes. And then after he died, like I didn't play the talk box, but after he died, I was like, Shh, man, I can never feature another talk box record. That's crazy. This is before I wrote Pretty Girl. Yes. And I can never do another talk box record. And just one day, I got an idea in my mind. Call his brothers. Call Zap and Lester and ask them if they will make a talk box for you like Rogers. And yeah. I did, and they did. And that's why I got that, that gift handed down to me. That is crazy. The history that comes with your, your, the, the greatness you make and the greatness you've done is, is just so fucking crazy, bro. That shit is it's a trip. Um, I also want to let you know, did you know that Bullet Kev used to um, bootleg your CDs back in the day? Oh, yeah, yeah. We worked at the same swap meet. What a piece of shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but to me, let me be honest with you. For there was a time when I needed to make money, so I bootlegged a lot of motherfucking songs. <laughs> <laughs> I saw mixtapes uh, mix at the swap meet for a long time, bro. Yeah, I man, I seen the interview I did, and then I remember I seen when he was like, 
man, somebody would tell me that you were going to come and I would have to hide all the, <laughs> all the, all the MB riders. And he's all a the, homie, though. Yeah, he's a homie. Yeah, no, well, a homie. Yeah, you guys are both from Phoenix and shit like that. Yep, Phoenix Suns forever, baby. I don't know about all of that. <laughs> y'all motherfuckers stay talking. Get rid of Chris Paul, y'all. Y'all need a real point guard. Y'all bullshitting. Yeah, but, but I got to be honest with you. Even though I've, I've been invited to perform at the Phoenix Suns during the playoffs and all that, sports is not my thing. I don't know analytics. Uh, I just, I'm a bandwagon. I'll mm. tell you. I'm a, yeah, you're when a we're winning, I'm wearing the jersey. Anything says phoenix i rock it you rock it. i rep the city the city yeah. but I, I like i don't know stats and and who's getting traded my son will tell me all that but yeah. i don't care i'm all about the music you know damn that's a trip but yeah i, I seen that i was like i was like boo like no, no wonder your name's such you should have such a piece of shit name and he was just like you know he's a homie <laughs> so we'd be talking shit to each other but when i seen that i was like fuck yeah. that is a trip can you remember the first show you did in la Yes, yes, I remember we did a uh, show in LA. Uh, it was it was NB Riders, and when we had our song called "So Fly," and then we, our second single, "Pretty Girl," had come out. So we were like all over Power 106 back when Big Boy was in the morning at Power 106. Okay, fire. Um, what year was this? Like 2006, 2004? It was 04, 05. 04, 05. 04 okay. and 05. And so we had we we're dominating LA radio for some for some Arizona boys to dominate LA, LA radio, radio. It was rare. It was crazy. Yeah. And so they put us on a concert called Powerhouse. And we were on that, and we just ripped that show down. It was amazing. Uh, a powerhouse at the Pond Center. It was, uh, it was an Anaheim Pond, which uh -huh. is now called something else. Is it the Anaheim Pond? I don't know. Um, Riley, can we look up if the... The I, Honda the, Center. The Honda Center. Oh, oh, so it's the Honda Center now. It's called the Honda Center Okay, now. okay, okay. That is crazy. Um, you said... What was it called? The power, The Powerhouse? Powerhouse. Power, power 106 Powerhouse. Hold on. Big D's calling me. I, I, he, 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 yo, we, we're in the interview. What's up? I've been outside for 15 trying to get in. Nobody, the door's locked. Can, oh. you, can you have them let him in? Yeah, yeah. On this one, on this one, on this one. Tell them to go to the alley. They'll get him in the alley. In the alley, they'll let you in. All right. All right, my God. Yes, sir. That's my manager, Big D, man. Yes, we we ride out, together D. forever, baby. Yeah, yeah, my God. That is a trip, though, bro. The shit you've accomplished, everything you've done is um, it's crazy. Did you ever live out here? First I've never, I never lived out here. Always lived in Arizona. Always, Always lived in Arizona. Six, six, 602. That's still my area code. Forever. That is crazy. Yeah. For that reason, you never moved out here? You know, I love L.A. It's so dope to visit, to come out here, to go to Disneyland, to go to the beaches. But home is home, you know? Mm. That's home. And, and so I, I remember Esteban Oreo. Congratulations, Esteban. He just got that collaboration with Dickies. Yeah, he's crazy. Yeah. And Shout so Esteban Oreo, he said, he's like, Magic. He goes, if you could live anywhere except Phoenix, where would you live? I'm like, no, no. He said, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you choose? And obviously he's pro L.A. So he thought I was going to say L.A. I'm yeah. like, Phoenix, that's home. Yeah. And he's like, you wouldn't pick L.A., bro? And I'm like, I love L.A., but it's a great place to visit, you know? Do you have any crazy stories with Esteban Oreo or maybe like a funny one? I, I love Esteban. He's dope, man. <laughs> I, I, the, I, the, stuff that, the stuff that, yeah, I do. I have an amazing story. Oh, please, please give me story. I have an story. amazing story. My homie Chino Brown and me had started to talk a little bit and work on music. And Chino Brown told me once, he goes, Magic, he goes, you, th you, think, you, could, uh, you, you think you could do a collaboration to feature Jenny Rivera? And I'm like... Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, I can. Yeah, absolutely. How you doing? How you doing? And so, and so, uh, and so Chino Brown said, okay, I'm going to talk to her because I, I know her. Uh, you know, this is my Chino Brown accent. Sorry, Chino. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so Chino went out and reached out to Jenny Rivera and, and she said, send me some music, mijo. That's, that's the type of girl she was. And so. And are you guys around the same age? You're a little older. Then Jenny, I think I'm older than Jenny. Yeah, so 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 the kind of weird when she was like, send me some music, Mijo. You were no, like, no, no. You're like, where's the same? Uh -uh. Like, yeah, I tell you what, bro, I still feel 21. Uh, I still I, feel 21. You look 21, man. Jake, I'll give it to you, man. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, so Jenny said yes, and it blew my mind. I didn't believe that she actually was going to get on a what record. What year was with us. this? Um, I want to say 2008. 2008 she was the fucking she was yeah. at her and I'm guessing I'm guessing, I'm guessing was yeah. that right love again 2008 yeah that's my manager big okay, deal. he's LA big forever deal. yeah I could tell man <laughs> so anyway uh for, so anyway uh, and and when and when Jenny Rivera did that did that song for us, it's called Love Again. I don't yeah. know if you know the song. 
I, I that should probably have to I have to probably listen to it and just re- yeah. get my memory um, back. Amazing a little bit. record, amazing record. I sent her the the instrumental of Princesa with different lyrics that I had written. I know Princesa. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's the same music of Princesa. I just wrote different lyrics. Different lyrics. And and I had uh, I had Nicole sing the hook, and I sent it to Jenny, and she loved it. Matter of fact, I sent her three songs, and she picked that one. And so we got together with E Dub uh, and recorded it up there in in Van Nuys at mm-hmm. his studio. At his studio. And then uh, and then after that. Um, uh, Esteban Orio shot the music video for us. He brought out his camera, him by himself, just one camera. And this is back in the day. DSLRs weren't what they are today. No production, just him and his camera. Just him, Esteban Orio and his camera. And if you go see that video today with Jenny Rivera, MC Magic, and Chino Brown, it is fucking amazing. Can we pull it up? We don't have to put the music right here, but I just <laughs> want to see because I don't think I could remember seeing this video. Just put. Jenny Rivera. Yeah, and then Jenny died like two years after, I think, something like that. Yeah. yeah. It was Damn. crazy, man. It was such a blessing to work with her, bro. I mean, there's four legends in one in one project. Jenny Rivera featuring, I mean, whoa. Just put Jenny Rivera and MC Magic. Yeah, it'll come up real quick. It's called Love Again. It should be that one. This first one? That's it right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you can mute it. I just want to see the other yeah, video. Yeah, look. That's, the, that's the downtown in the alleys. You see what I'm saying? That's in L.A. You oh. see? So I really am part of L.A. <laughs> <laughs> And Long Beach, if you have Jenny Rivera on a song. Yeah, for sure. Wow, Esteban recorded this? This with, a, with one camera all by himself. And I, I was blown away how beautiful it came out. I mean, that's why he's Esteban Oriol, bro. Wow, okay, right. We can take it down. That is fucking crazy. Because you would think such a big artist you are, such a huge artist Jenny Rivera's are, you guys would get a production team. There would be Jen- a location. Yeah, and it's crazy because at that time she was filming her show called I Love Jenny. I Love Jenny. Yeah, and so she was filming that, and she brought her camera crew to, to do the behind the scenes. Uh-huh. And so it's on one of her TV episodes. Episodes and shit. Yeah. Can you remember where you were when Jenny Rivera passed away? I don't. I, I can't remember where I was. I, I, just, I think my wife uh, woke me up and said, did you hear? You know, I heard. I heard. I heard on the radio that Jenny passed away. I think I was home that day. That was such a crazy time for Latinos. Man, so many people crying. Bro, my tia threw a party. No cap. Like, Is that right? Like my mom and my sisters and them. Even to this day, when you know, every because my family when they drink, you know, most of family is into like Vicente and stuff like that. Yeah. My family drinks and like starts bumping like the reggaeton and I mean the um the rock in Espanol. So they bump a lot of El Tri, Aragon and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But, Rebelde, um, RBD. Maybe not Rebelde. To them, that's Fresa. They're, okay. They're, <laughs> so they listen to more like El Tri, El Aragon, um, Jaguares. Fuck Los Angeles del Infierno Ooh, and shit like that. Shit, they'll, okay. they'll do, and then the skull will start cracking. Yeah. But Jenny Rivera is definitely one of the, you feel me? And then when women, when, especially, well, I mean, because my family's Mexican, so when Mexican women get drunk, you know, soy, 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 fucking soy de las huevotes y cuando se muere una dama y a chingar a su madre and shit like that. That's right. That's so right. And Jenny impact, was about it. And Jenny was and about she, that. She was full on. You know, she's boss like, shit. Ovarios type Ovarios shit. Ovarios type shit. <laughs> yeah. Ovarios was crazy. Yeah. Then that is the trip. Um, do you regret never working with a certain person? No, uh-uh. I don't, I don't regret uh, who I've worked with, and I don't regret uh, passing up opportunities because I'm, I'm a firm believer, above anything, God. And God yes. guides me. Like I told you earlier, yes. God gave me music Most to definitely. be my guide. And so uh, if it was meant to be, it was meant to be. But, but like when something falls through and it doesn't happen, I'm just like, okay, God's time, it'll happen. Was there a feature or a certain song that never came out just because it just didn't come out? It was like not, not like there was any... In bad intention, it just like I don't know. Maybe you had a song with a certain artist, and it just never dropped. The the one the one thing that that I'm that I'm mad about that never really got full scope is one time we collaborated with Twista. It was Twista, MC Magic, and this little artist that hardly nobody knew named Snow the Product. Wow. Okay, we, continue we, the story. We did, we did I'm a, excited for the story. Yeah, we did a record called Digging. And, you know, I booked the studio time. I booked the expensive video crew. Cost me, you know, like $13,000. And back then it was a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot of money, yes. And, and so I booked the, the, the crew and everything. And, and, and Snow the Product showed up. MC Magic showed up. The cameras were there. The music was there. And Twister's people called in and said 106 and Park called and, they, and, and Twister won't be able to make it. 
And so we never got Twista on that video. And Damn. But you guys had the song. But he murdered the record. Murdered the record. Did the song ever come out? Yeah, the song, okay, came, the song out. came out. But the yeah. video never came out. Visual never came out. <laughs> the, with no twist on it. We just did like a small edit. I like and, a small edit. And I was editing. like, damn, I'm cheating the people. And I even reached out to him recently and said, well, we should just go back and film your part and re-release the video with you on it. You what know? did he say? He didn't respond. <laughs> <laughs> damn, Twista, you got to come back. That's crazy. Um, can you remember when you met um, Snow the Product? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, when we first worked together, it was all through email. It was all through email. So I sent her the track. And she made me the verse, and she sent it back. She was really grateful and humble. Back then, she lived in El Paso, Texas, I think. El Paso, Texas. Around that time. And it was a homie named Romeo602 that told me, Magic, there's this chick out there named, named uh, Snow White. She was actually called Snow White before Disney told her she couldn't be called Snow White. Oh, okay. Whoa, shit, I didn't know that story. Yeah, That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, Disney put a cease and desist on her name, and so she had to change it to Snow the Product, which turned out even better. Yes. You know, and so I featured I, I, I featured her just on talent. She had yeah. no name. Yeah, she had She's no not name. the Snow from today. Yes. And I featured her on talent. And I've heard her say in a couple of interviews, you know, yeah, you, you guys probably never heard MC Magic, but yeah, he, he gave me my first shot you know yeah that's crazy that is such a trip you know the first concert i ever went to was uh mc magic concert no no for real the mb writers yeah mb writers when you guys did the uh like a tour when you guys did the tour at the novo 20 oh yeah we did the reunion tour the reunion 2018 tour. that was the first time i ever went to a concert yeah i went to one before <laughs> but there's the ones before were like hey you want to come we have an extra ticket this one, they bought me my ticket for my birthday because I knew I wanted to go see MC Magic and then be writers. That's dope. You should actually come to one of our concerts now and be backstage or host it. And yeah, do man. It. Oh, yeah, man. I got to come bullshit with y'all, bro, because I'll be seeing you with, with my boy Concrete and them. I love Concrete. Man, bro, you let Concrete use your talk box? That, that, <laughs> did I? <laughs> yeah, for the skit. You definitely let, let him. Yeah, look at Oh, him. for the skit that we did. Actually, it was his own mangarita. It wasn't mine. <laughs> I was like, Magic, you want some shit right now. I wish that was me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had his own mangarita. That was funny. That was a good yeah. skit. Now, yeah, the first time I seen you, um, you had some openers, obviously. Um, Somebody opened up for you, and then I know um, just right before you was Little Rob. Yeah, yeah, and me then, and Little Rob been working together for a long time. For a long time. And then, so we'll get into that right now. And then... Um, and then it was the MB Writers one. And I think, did you guys bring out Kuko that day or you just played the song? Uh, no, Kuko was, was a different, was a different time. Was a different yeah, time. Yeah, when we did the MB Writers uh, thing was in 2018. I think I brought out Kuko at the Novo in maybe like 2019 or 2020. Okay. No, no, it wasn't 2019. 2019. Because 2020 we had no concerts. Yeah, 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 yeah it was COVID. <laughs> How was that? Seeing another Latino do what you do and, I, and I was, for a different genre. I was blown away that somebody from Hawthorne, as, 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 as talented as Kuko yeah, yeah, said. my brother right there. I was inspired by Little Rob and MC Magic. That shit blew me away. Really? Yeah. He's the one that found it. He's the one that sent it to me. This, this kid likes you. No, he literally, like, when I first heard him, it was 27, 2016 when he had the song, the Oye oh, yeah, Cariño, Solo Pienso en Tina. I was like, oh, shit, this motherfucker on some shit. He, and then I and then obviously now both of us with our success we got to connect and yeah. work and we're really good homies and shit. But I remember I told him too I was like dog I was a fan before I met you. That's dope. and obviously like that's not really always my type of music. But him being a little indie and like and then and then you know it's dope when you see people's interview and you get to know about them. Like he was in a ska band and I love ska music. I go to ska shows to this day. Yeah. Go fucking skank it out and shit. So we we had a lot of dope connection. And then my homegirl. Played your guys' song, and I was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" They made a song. She's like, "Fool, they made a song." <laughs> Burnley, you guys barely released it. I want to go get that motherfucker. And I was like, "Oh, they did some shit." Yeah, yeah. Search. I could search this, this whole, whole world. world. That yeah. shit is crazy. Yeah, I never actually, find the nine. That shit is some shit right there. I wrote that on my way to L.A. to record with him. I was in the car thinking, "I want. It's got to be something epic, something all the girls in the whole world." And and that's what I wrote. And so Kuko sang that. For, for who produced that song? Uh, I produced the whole record. The music was done uh, in collaboration with my homie D Salas. Okay, that's dope, and and that's dope to see two different, two different generations come together for the same type of love and music. I thought that was dope, and I think including Little Rob was just epic. Yeah, it really was. It really was. And and matter of fact, me and Little Rob working. I got probably two records in the can with Little Rob that we've never released yet. Just waiting on the right timing. Yeah. And then we're we're, we're about to record another song together. It was really That's, dope. Can you remember when you met Little Rob? That's a trip. Just because the fact that you guys were just you guys are both super monumental in our culture, but like you guys going on tour and doing so much together, it's like fuck. 
Can you guys drop some more music together? I got the whole story of how I met Little Robin, how I got how I got did wrong by by my ex label. So this is what happened. He had a manager named Jerome Stevens back then. Little Rob. And yeah, that was that was Little Rob's manager. And Jerome would call me all the time. Yeah, man, let me hook you up with Little Rob. He's this and that. And I did more research on Rob because I knew of him, but I didn't know how how strong he had a hold on the streets. You know, fucking before summer nights. <laughs> Yeah, way before summer. Nights. Okay, way before summer. Way nights. before summer nights. That's when he had uh, a Mexican gangster. That's the only album he had. Yeah. Out. And so um, I, I researched Lil Rob and MB Riders had a show. It was a promo show. When I say a promo show, the record company sends you on their own money to that city. Nobody gets paid. They pay for your airline. They pay for your hotel. You visit the radio station. The radio station might take you to a club and make a lot of money and nobody gets paid. And then they send you on home. So that was a good promo tour. We'll continue to play your song on the radio. Yeah. It's rape. It's rape is what it is. <laughs> oh, shit. So we was on a promo tour in San Diego and I, and I was already talking with Jerome and with Lil Rob. And I said, and I said, uh, I said, while I'm in San Diego, I'm gonna make time to sit down with you because I want to work with you. Yes, I want to, I want to work with you. I want to bring you as one of my projects into my label. And then the only up label that I knew had distribution was was John. And so I talked That's to John. That's from upstairs, right? <clears throat> yeah, upstairs. And I told John, I go, John, I got this project I'm working on. I want you to listen to it. And when I sent him the little Rob songs that he had before, this is before Summer Nights. Yeah. Uh, he's like, ah, he's too cholo magic. I don't think that's going to work on the radio. And I don't know. And so and so the the VP, the person that works radio, what, the day that we met little Rob in San Diego, it was at a pizza hut. It was at a pizza hut. And the VP was like, I don't want to be seen with that cholo, right? This is this is the, the VP of Upstairs Records. Her and the other guys that used to be in my group, MB Riders, they yeah. sat at another table, and me and Lil Rob, we sat on the table by ourselves chopping up business. So then I brought him to Phoenix and recorded two songs together. I sent him to John, and John was like, I don't know, Magic. It, it, you know, like I said, this is two cholo stuff. It's not, it, yeah. we, we work radio things. And, uh, and I'm like, pull up the sound scan on his album. So he pulled up the sound scan. And uh, and then I called him like in two weeks. I'm like, so what's up? What are we gonna do with little Rob? He goes, we already signed him. I was like, what? You already signed him? That was our project, John. Nah, Magic. I thought you no. Nah. So I got burned on that one. Fuck, bro. But it was that first album that had that had Summer Nights on it. The album. Uh, no, no, that was Neighborhood Music. I think. I don't remember Man, the songs on it. That's crazy. But the song that I wrote on on that first album that he had on Upstairs Records was uh, I Was Raised on the Streets of California. Yeah. yeah, I produced that music and I did the songs as well. Got no money from it. Um, nah. These record labels be yeah. fucking wildin'. You know how many stories I've heard of? You were a little older, obviously still learning the game, but if you know how many stories I've heard of like young ass kids getting 360 labels? Yeah, I mean, 360 came out. I think, uh, I think when when LimeWire came out, because LimeWire was taking so much money from the labels, they're like, we got to do something to make money. And I think that's when the 360 deal came out, where they own everything, even your tour money, your shows, your T-shirt money, and all that stuff. So the way you were making the most money was touring. All artists. That's why. That's why the Rolling Stones like will will will, will tour until they die. It's because that's how most most uh, bands make their money, especially bands. Because labels, man, they're, they're the big labels. They've taken advantage of a lot of even the small ones. They've taken advantage of people. You know, like no statements for years and all kind of stuff like that. Wow, that is a trip. How that that whole thing works out, and it's just like, and it's just honestly about knowing. Because if you don't know and you just sign a paper, it's like. Well, shit, what the fuck do I do now? You know what it is? It's when, when, you, when you love music so much, you just want your music out there. You just want your music. You want to be heard. And nowadays, you can be heard because you got the platforms. But the, back in the day, there was no platforms. Most definitely. The labels are the ones that got you heard. They got you on the radio. You know, before social media, radio was king, bro. Yeah. I know you said that you don't regret working with anybody or, like, if, if, whoever you worked with, you don't regret it. Or if, if you passed up on something, you, you don't regret it as well. You regret signing any of those those um those deals? Um, <clears throat> I can't regret it because it's brought me here, and mm -hmm. I learned from them. Even though I lost money, I got taken advantage of. 
ruined friendships, all that stuff, I learned from it. And that's why I went back to being MC Magic, because I know that I'm not going to have to be yelling at someone that's late to to uh, to Fuck. sound check. Someone that's stayed out too late, now they got hung over the next day. Someone that's getting in trouble with the police because they're chasing a girl that's underage. All type of shit comes up when you have a group. And so you just got to, <clears throat> I just had to go back to being MC Magic, that way I can control everything. I see what you're saying. You, see, you can control tr- your your personal yeah, shit and not yeah. do with everybody else's shit. Because um, it comes with a lot of dangers too, man. Yeah. Um. Are you signed now? Uh, I'm signed to my own label. You signed to your own yeah, label. Yeah. I am the record company now. It's nastyboyrecords.com. Fire. Okay. And you have J Rocks on you. I have J Rocks on my label. Is yeah. that the only one you have right now? No. I also have El Terricola, one of the artists that I was a fan of growing up. I met him at a at a festival, and we signed him to my label because he was he was not signed anymore. And uh, and we're we're producing stuff with him as well. Um, how'd you find J Rock from a little city in next to the border? <laughs> J Rock, I know about you, girl. We we we, we gonna get the interview in soon. Yeah, we'll get J Rock's on here. Yeah, uh, I was on live. I was on Instagram live, and I was just you know fans go live with me. I talked to them a little bit, and she said she wanted to sing. She pulled out her guitar, and she impressed me. I really liked her energy. It wasn't so much that she that that she did this amazing song, but it was good. And she had the right energy. I'm like, I like, I like this little Chicana. She's got something. Yeah. And, and it and it, it turned out to be real, man. Because we released her two years ago, and I mean, she's doing like 27 million TikToks. You know what I'm saying? 27 she, million numbers on TikTok. She's she, bananas, bro. She's killing. And women support women like nothing else nowadays. Yes. Yeah. And right now, it, it, right now, it's 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 a good era for Chicanos right now. Um, it's 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 cool to be brown right now, you yeah, know. For Latino That's why Chicago, companies yeah. like Dickies are reaching out to Stevan Oriol. That's dope, by the way, Stevan. What you're doing is dope, and I think which what, what you're doing with J Rock is dope because I know. Is it difficult when they're younger trying to explain to them that like because because she's on tour with you guys, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we she's she's uh, she's opener. It's her little Robin and you, right? Is it hard to be like this is a, like even though yes, this is your dream, is also a business. It is a business, but but also her her dad is her manager, okay. and we're really close. We work closely with the family, uh, with her family, and so J Rock's really wants to be a superstar. Yeah. Like that that's that was one of the main reasons I brought her on board because I saw she had the ganas. Um, a lot of people want to do it, but they're too busy, you know, partying too much. They want to be famous, but they want to go chase this and holes and this and that. Like J Rock still, you know, is not about having a boyfriend and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. She's about the music, you know. She's what, like sixteen, seventeen? She just turned nineteen. She just turned nineteen. Oh, and we signed it two years ago, so she was seventeen. Yeah, I um, met I met her during the pandemic. The, okay, was there an agreement? How does the agreement work? Like when you sign somebody, is it like uh, you need to go to school? You need your G high school diploma? Is like is there certain shit you got to write down when they are underage and you yeah. sign them to a label? I met her in May. The same month that she graduated from high school. Oh, so she was already... Okay, so you didn't really have to deal with the... Motherfucker, you gotta go to school. <laughs> yeah, no, her dad did, though. Her okay. dad said, you gotta sign up for college. And she did one semester of college until he saw that this music with Nasty Boy Records was really gonna work, and he let her quit school after that. Did... For they didn't believe in the dream at first? I mean, they're, fan, they're fans. Just, you know, they grew up with the music, too. The, the mom and the dad. Uh, uh, shout out to Freddie and Lucy. And, shout out uh, Freddie and Lucy. Yeah, they're fans of it, too. So they believed in it. But the, one of the things they told me is everything you told us, we didn't believe you were going to do it. And, and like a year later, two years later, they're like, damn, Magic, everything you said, it really happened. Yeah, you weren't just talking out your ass is, I think, what they were trying to say because a lot of labels would do that or a lot of... Artists that have their own labels would do that, especially yeah. with somebody like a success like yours. No doubt. And and because I'm a small label, you yes. know, I'm definitely not Interscope, nowhere near. Yeah. Because I'm a small label, you know, there's only so much we can do. You most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like those companies, they, they like uh like the the Grammys is their quinceañera. It's their you know their their yeah. homecoming. It's all them, you know. Like mm-hmm. they control all that. Yeah. So we never have a seat at that table because we're independent. We're on the outside. Yeah. You know, they're like fuck nasty boy records. You know, yeah. we gotta we gotta survive for ourselves. But the one thing about us is that we're organic and we're really about the music, our movement, and our people. And that's what's what's very well needed, and that's what fucking pushes the whole team together. Yeah, yeah, Not- of course. You, you gotta be real, bro. Like you, like, like I told you earlier, I couldn't do gangster music. I was, I was never a gangster. Yeah, most of the shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and so even though it was it was the most popular music at the time, I was that little boat that could. I was like, I know this little love song's gonna go. I know. Nah, that love. shit. It, it didn't just go, motherfucker. That shit. Yeah. That shit is still it's somewhere up there. Still like just <laughs> going crazy. Hey, I'm glad you're such a fan, bro. It, it, it's, it's, it's it's warm as my heart. I, I, my heart's broken because I did a video a long time ago, and I'm gonna look for it right now. 
to show you and you just liked it and it broke my heart that you didn't repost it because the moment you were reposting I tried to repost I tried to repost it you were singing lies I remember with, for the homegirl next to me I you. don't really care what you feel inside that's my shit right yeah. there I tried to repost it but I couldn't it didn't let you yeah well send it to me Magic you that shit would have changed my life Magic well I actually <laughs> don't talk to her no more so I probably won't send it to you nah. <laughs> but yeah man that was our shit and like I'm saying because I used to work at Polo Loco you did yeah I worked at Polo Loco and we, you feel me? Like I was, I like, I like all types of music. You feel me? So you know, a lot of my fuckers won't listen to certain shit because it's like, oh, it's corny. Fool. I'm like, fool, shut the fuck up, fool. So you don't know what bitches like, obviously. You know, I like all types of music. You know what too, I mean? Yeah. So when I sit there and get in a car and I bump some and be riders, and I know the, I, cause motherfuckers know the hook. That's it. But motherfucker, do you know the part where you're telling her you want to see her eye to eye across from the fucking rooftop? <laughs> you don't. And that shit ain't going to go nowhere. That's so dope. that's love, man. But yeah, man, it's, it's been a pleasure. Can we bring out the talk box? Yeah, absolutely. Let me, let's, let me set it up right here. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, um, can we call him in? He's he going to do something off the talk box so we can get the angle of it. You know what I mean? And then we got to do a TikTok from my TikTok when you're singing on the talk box. So, man, how's the drive? It was cool? Right down the street. Right down the street. Eee! Talk box. Hey Gina, you seen this shit before? The talk box? You gotta listen to this shit. This shit crazy. OG Suicide, you seen one before, right? Oh yeah, see? OG Suicide now. That's dope that you came to our show at the do at the at the Novo. That was a long time ago, bro. 2018. 2018. That's I when I did the MB Riders tour. The, there was a reunion the tour. The reunion tour, yeah. Yep. Have you talk about ever been left at the airport before? Oh, yeah, they lost it. Oh, so they've. I just don't want you to be walking around with a, with, a, with a handheld and trip over it. <laughs> nah, for they left it before. I mean, for they oh, lost yeah. it before. We've, lo we've had to do a show without the top box, which is crazy. Yeah. Fuck. Right? I know that shit could be stressful. Fucking, what's it called? A lot of the musician homies, when they do the. um, When they um fucking. They be at the airport and they lose their guitars and their. They be mad, but obviously a talk box is different. Like you could get a guitar down the street. Yeah, you really can. You just you go can, to guitar center. You can't get a talk box. But I, I, I have gone to guitar center and 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 and, and uh, you know rig some little shit, shit together just to get through a show before. Hell yeah! I had to do that. Let me see here. Come on, Magic. We got to do some crazy shit. Crazy. Okay, fuck, we're gonna do a pretty girl, but I'm gonna record it and then you're gonna do the. I'll start it off, but you could do the rest. All right, ready? Uh -huh. We gotta do this shit. Gina, just know, just know, little me was getting so much pussy off this, Gina. That was fucking so many bad bitches. I was like, bitch. You ever heard Emmy Riders? All right, ready? I'm gonna start. Let me it. do the intro and then you come in after that, okay? Like, check that. Okay, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. We'll do it. Can I run away with you? I wanna get lost in love, baby. To all my pretty girls, okay, this we'll one's back. for you. That's crazy. Okay, okay, ready, ready, we're gonna do it again. All right, ready? Um, should I do the intro just so I can surprise people that are here? You got it, go. Uh, okay, you got okay, it, okay. I'll follow in. All right, ready? One, I'm nervous right now, you feel me? Legends right here. All right, ready? Uh, I'm gonna just say, can I, and then I'm gonna just boom. Ready, you got me? Yeah. All right, ready? All right. Can I run away with you? I wanna get lost in love, baby. To all my pretty girls, no knows in the house. Something about you, baby, drives me crazy. Something about my pretty girls blows my mind. Something about you, baby, drives me crazy. Something about my pretty girls. Woo. Yes, sir. That's crazy. Can you do um? That was fire. Can you do lies? Yeah, absolutely. Here lies we go. is crazy. Why would you lie to me? Oh shit, my phone, my phone, After my phone. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, go you ahead. Good? Yeah, go ahead. You After ready? all that we've been through, after the love that I gave you. 
That's so Woo. crazy. That is amazing. Just you can tell your lies. I, I don't really care what you feel inside. All you ever did was make me cry. I'm telling you. Maybe one day you'll realize that you had a good Woo. one in your life. Hey. Dude, that was my <laughs> shit, man. This has been the MC Magic interview. It was a blessing. Just know, little me is so thankful for you for all the panties you got me and for the, all the great music you made and for all the people that just i know your shows are still so impactful and i can't wait to just one day we just gotta go sit down and have a beer or something and just conversate for sure shit. i got you on me brother oh my, on my me. guy on I, me I, too i don't even drink but i drink one with you okay, brother yeah my guy <laughs> man I, magic. Oh, I, brought brought you, I brought you a couple little gifts because oh my you know, god I, you know i actually thought I, I actually thought letty was gonna be here so i brought some oh, more nah, makeup nah. too oh you brought some makeup oh you got some makeup i did bring some makeup you okay know, yeah, yeah i started man, turning I, all my songs in the makeup palettes pretty girl i seen that yeah sexy lady yeah all that shit def you know what i mean I, so, I definitely i think i think i actually bought one of my little biddies one i think you she did i think i sent her the thing check it out this is the mc magic bluetooth the magic box brother wow ooh, ooh. my god a little god. something you could keep yes a little something you could keep baby you gotta sign this for me before you leave though yeah this and, is and fire. then and then uh the and then the first the album that i, I saw you were singing lies remember you said that? yeah lies my and shit. so i brought you the cd that lies came out on in, oh. in 2006 is when i dropped magic city bro. and i just got a new office so i'm definitely gonna I, this is crazy i feel like i'm in my nardware moment you know when no, we're bringing out shit that yeah. you that you love so much Wow. So, so so people don't even bank CDs anymore. I'm and, definitely gonna go buy a CD those player. Are, that's a limited edition because we don't print it anymore either. My God, this is so amazing. Yeah. I just want to put it out there that this right here is just one of these wow magic. It's a Bluetooth speaker. The box has a cable and everything. And I brought you one of the dream big hoodies too for oh one of, for God. one of your little breezies. Oh yeah, man. I'm definitely gonna give this to one of my little breezies. I'll send you a picture too. <laughs> uh -huh. We on a date and shit. I'm definitely gonna be like, hey, you gotta wear yeah. this. Today. Oh, let me let me get, pull out the makeup too. Oh so yeah, yeah. Oh right, man, I'll take the makeup. You can give me the makeup. I'll give it to one of the breezies too. There you go. See, yes. Let, Letty, you lost out. Letty, you lost out. <laughs> right there. That's a little makeup. Oh, box. oh yeah, we gotta open this. Fucking makeup tutorial real quick. Yes, yes. Just cause, cause I seen how much work you put in. And it's just so amazing. And how is it doing your own makeup? As it's a guy? amazing, Cause I, cause bro. I know it could be a little... It's amazing, bro. I cater to Latinas. Come on now. I'm already knowing, boy. <laughs> hey, keep it a bug. How many... Would you ever make your own hot Cheeto strain? <laughs> <laughs> I don't smoke, bro. No hot Cheetos. Hot, you said hot Cheeto strain, right? No hot Cheetos. Like, like, like. Would you ever make your own version of the hot Cheetos? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wow. You know, I'm into. Like, Riley, you like makeup? Riley's like, fuck yeah, give me one of those palettes. Show her that pretty girl palette. Hey, She's wanna... like, wow, this is a nice palette. Because girls really like the, the 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 earth tones and stuff. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I don't know too much of it, but definitely I, I had to learn, my... bro. Yeah, you had to learn. One of my little breezies one time was like. Hey, um, cause she has seen that you were already following me. And I was like, motherfucker, I'll buy it for you. I ain't gonna ask the homie. That's you feel me? It's business. We and we cop that motherfucker. I do remember that. Hey, you got some more some of my merchandise right here, my brother. Look at that. I'm keeping all this. <laughs> this my, mom, my mom might take this motherfucker, but I'll cop this shit. <laughs> my mom, see, my mom don't even know English, but she definitely knows who you are. That's dope. Which is dope. That's as dope. Fuck. Sing I love these names. How'd you come up with the names? It's just on some like we already know what Those it is. Those are my song titles. Yeah, the two a lot of them. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. you're talking about the names of yeah, the palettes. Of the, the palettes, name, yes, of the, yes. the name of the shades. Yeah, there's just stuff that I came up with that I thought would be cute to the culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the the chula is crazy. Brown eyes, Ooh. brown eyes, chula. I like all this shit. Rosie. This shit is dope. Man, I appreciate you, Magic. Me meeting you is like full circle and just great moment in my time. Great moments in my time and just still great moment. Like I said, I'm I'm I I you're every time I do some MC or hosting. At a at a at like a reggaeton or some shit, I always most yeah. definitely. The first time I met you, uh, somebody said, uh, "Duno's doing Night of the Blacks again. Do you wanna?" Uh, and they want to they want to know if you'll call in to the podcast. Remember that? I do, and you and you called in. I did. You called in, and then I sang word for word your song. <laughs> and I remember everybody was so excited. But you were, I think you were a little tipsy that night. I was definitely a little tipsy <laughs> off some bullshit or something. <laughs> this is crazy, by the way. This is keep you for me. Take this to the club. It's a little too sparkly for me, but I'll definitely use it at the house. You know what I mean? I still use it. I, I like glitter, bro. <laughs> I love how cups smell when they're new. That's a thing for me. Man, I appreciate it. Magic, Magic, let them know where they can find you and, and what you got going on right now. I, I, I know you got the tour. This might be this might drop like in two weeks, but I, you, are you still going to be on tour? Yeah, we're on tour. Man, we stay on tour, bro. Okay, yeah, we come on. on yeah, let them know what you got coming up. Any songs, yeah. any people you want to put people on. That's very much you can leak definitely, everything right now. Definitely check out J Rocks. Uh, my new artist El Terricola. El Terricola. Everything that that's uh, got to do with MC Magic, whether it's concerts, merchandise. 
contact for a quinceanera because I still be showing up at quinceaneras too. Damn, when's the last time you did a yeah. quinceanera? Oh man, when's the last time? About two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, maybe, wow. Yeah, yeah, we did a quinceanera, and and so everything is at Nasty Boy Records. Nasty Boy Records. Dot and com. just the way it's spelled, some motherfuckers, some motherfuckers <laughs> don't know how to spell it. They gonna add some type of nasty a n a n. I see, I can't even spell it. N a s t y. N a s t y. Boys. B o y s. No, b o boy. Nasty boy. boy. Oh, Nasty Boy Records. Okay, see, you motherfuckers like me gonna spell something <laughs> different. You feel me? Make sure you guys go get your little breezies. The the palace, you feel me? This I don't know if you're setting this online. You are, yeah. That's on my okay, website but too. But just know yeah. I got it for free, so you cannot be like me. <laughs> but make sure you guys go get all of that. And yeah, man, this has been Duno's world with MC Magic. Oh, um, forgive him the IG. The MC IG, Magic. MC Magic Official. MC Magic Official. And, and, and you know, TikTok is really popping for me right now, too. So get me on TikTok, MC Magic Official. MC Magic. Um, can we get a goodbye on the talk box? Absolutely. Let's do this. Can we Can we do something for Riley? Riley is, is our fellow white girl and Latina. So maybe we could go out by singing Bye to Riley. Let's do, uh, I'll do something for Riley. This one's called uh, All My Life. Yeah, Riley. Tell me, can I talk to you? Pretty, pretty Riley. I love that pretty color on your eyes. Yes, yes. Woo! Yuri's going to be mad. Yeah. <laughs> man, shout out MC Magic. I love you, bro. It was such an honor and blessing. Too, Can't wait to take these pictures and FaceTime my mom and my sisters because they love you too. And we out of here. Been No Jumper with Duno. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Patreon. Patreon.com slash No Jumper. Go watch everything we do. At the end of the day, every Wednesday, and we end this motherfucker. Bow. Bzzz.